And joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, first guest of the day, voice of the Utah Utes on ESPN 700 in Salt Lake City, Utah. His name is Bill Riley. Bill, welcome back to the program. Hi, guys. Bill, uh, you and I had a fun back and forth yesterday. You put out a question of the day that got a lot of run and a lot of response. <laughs> I fanned the Flames. I don't think I uh, intended to fan them so highly, but, hey, it happened. Uh, and it deals essentially with how one defines competitive. So let me ask you this. If, let's say, BYU in the 1980s, which had a 9-1 and record over a 10-year span against Utah, did you – did? Or would you say it was competitive back then, even if some of the games were close? How do you define competitive? No. Okay. You, comp you define competitive in a rivalry series by wins and losses. Nobody remember. If you are judging games by margin of victory, you're looking for moral victories. And I'm not a moral victory guy. I judge competitive series over the course of time, especially in a rivalry, by wins and losses. And that's why I brought that question up yesterday for those that didn't <laughs> didn't jump on. And by the way, thank you, Spencer, because I think you 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 I don't know that you got me any more followers, but the the poll once you decided to chime in uh, <laughs> shifted quite a bit. But no, I, I asked the I, I asked the question yesterday, and I and I do mean this, and it isn't just based on the game this year solely. Um, Utah's won 13 of 16, seven in a row since joining the Pac-12 conference. And I talked to a, a college football analytics guy, a guy named Dave Bartu, the other day on my radio show. And, and I, I, I just asked him about Utah. And they, their, their recruiting and player development trajectory has been on a, on a steady climb since Kyle Whittingham took over, especially the last few years. And then I asked him about the in-state teams, Utah State and BYU and Bartu. I don't know what it was, but he went off and he basically pointed out that analytically BYU is recruiting at an all-time low in the program, their player development and things like that. And so I was just talking about it. And, and I, I brought it up yesterday because historically – Utah has the upper hand in the rivalry. They've won 64 of 99 matchups and seven in a row since the split in the Mountain West. And, and, and I just, I've looked at it and I, you know, the programs have gone in different directions and Utah's won quite a few in a row and they've got a recruiting advantage, no honor code, power five conference, things of that nature. And BYU's at a, at a bit of a disadvantage and so I just simply asked, will the rivalry ever be consistently competitive again? And I probably should have thrown the caveat in, not the games themselves, but over a span of time, will there ever be a decade like, say, the 90s or 2000s where it was 5-5? Five and five? Sure. You know, will, will there ever be a time where it's 6-4, and 5-5? Five and five? Because, you know, that, that's – Right now, that's not where we're at. And, you know, the poll came out almost a dead heat. It was slightly in favor of the yes, and I think because of Spencer Linton <laughs> and many of his followers <laughs> jumping on here. But, it, but, but for me, unless BYU makes some institutional changes, i.e. the honor code, or Utah just bottoms out, say Whittingham retires and whoever they hire does a terrible job, I don't see it changing any time in the near future. So that, that was my that was my two cents worth yesterday. Lots to discuss within that. Um, so in terms of the argument that, okay, competition, competitive is defined by wins and losses. Do you feel like then, because Washington is 6-1 and one versus Utah in the last seven uh, matchups, that that series is not competitive as well, even though yes. the margins yes. have... <laughs> become closer See, you're, you're you're now switching the narrative jerem you are you are taking it away from the byu utah question <laughs> to try and you're trying to craft the narrative in a different direction no no, no i'm talking about utah, wins and losses but, but i don't think no but, but i don't think utah has been competitive because they're one in six against against washington that that's my point i judge games uh, over a period of time since they joined the pac-12 conference they've not been competitive because they've won once that's the hurdle Utah's got to get over this year if they're going to meet the goal they want to meet, and that's win the Pac-12 championship. It doesn't matter that they lost on a fluke play last year. They still lost, and, that, and as a result, they weren't Pac-12 champions, and, and, and Washington was. It doesn't matter that they, they lost up at Rice-Eccles in a close game, and they, lost, they, they still lost the games. 
So you don't so feel the, like it was the, competitive, the, even though it's USC, one play but away. The USC series has been very competitive. Utah's won in Salt Lake. USC has won in, in Los Angeles. So that that series has been competitive since they joined the Pac-12 conference. So, Bill, is it fair to say then that individual games within their own right can be competitive, but if you judge it based on a series of games over a number of years, that that too can have its own definition of competitive? No, that that's exactly what I'm saying here. I'm judging series of games, the, the, the series between Utah and BYU – has been one-sided in favor of Utah over the last 16 meetings and in over the last seven since they split from the Mountain West Conference together. And my point is Utah has some built-in advantages right now, being a Power 5 school, not having any real limitations on the type of athletes and players they bring in from a recruiting standpoint. They're not playing on the same level as they did maybe a little bit more when they were both Mountain West Conference schools. So – I, I'm, I'm judging it by the overall competitive nature of the series, not the games themselves, because we all know that the games have been close. And by the way, guys, I'm not saying that BYU can't and won't beat Utah ever again. Sure. I'm saying over, say, a decade-long span, I'll be really surprised unless something changes drastically in one or both programs if the games are 5-5 five and five or 6-4. and four. I think Utah's got a definitive advantage from a talent standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint, from a lot of different standpoints that BYU doesn't have right now, that if something changes by chance, well, that could level it out. But as things are right now, I have a hard time seeing it over the course of 10 to 15 to 20 years being competitive from a wins and loss standpoint. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because – Currently, Utah, this is, this is the, Bill, this is the perfect time for you to have this conversation. It is. Utah won the Pac-12 South outright for the first time, went to the Pac-12 title game, returns Huntley, Moss, Covey, all, a lot of that defense, highest preseason rank. Like, this, this, is, this is the perfect time. Do you feel like this is the, the best Utah team going into a season ever? On paper, yes. I think it's better. Th- well, no, no. I, I shouldn't say it. In the Whittingham era, for sure. This is the best team Kyle's had. It would be hard for me to say it's better than the 4 team, although they've got more preseason hype. This is the highest consensus Utah's ever been. If you go, you know, all the preseason mags, all the, all the polls that come out, Utah's going to end up at about a 13 or 14 consensus. Their previous hire, and I went back, and I didn't go every year, but I went back as far as I could go in most of the consensus preseason polls. The highest consensus they were – over 10 to 15 polls was 20th, and that was coming into the 04 season. So I, I, it would be hard for me to say this is this team's better than the 64 Liberty Bowl team. That was really <laughs> good. But at least in the Whittingham era, and that's the era that I've been closest to this program, top to bottom, front line starters. I, I even think, and I, I've even talked to some of the guys that were on that Sugar Bowl team in 08. I, I think the – and Andy Ludwig said it to the Athletic the other day too. He said, hey – not much has changed here in the program from a cultural standpoint and a mindset, he says, but the athletes that we have in this program now are different than I was when, when I was here 10 years ago. So given the excitement, uh, the hype, um, if BYU beats Utah in game one, is this perhaps the most devastating loss to BYU in a long time or perhaps ever? Uh, well, it would be devastating. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if you would say ever because – it's just hard if they, if they then go on to win the Pac-12. Yeah, it would be one of those things where you'd look back and say, "Well, oh, man, that was that was a lousy way to begin the season, yeah. and we stubbed our toe." But if you go on and win the Pac-12, that that's why you know again we're we're talking about these two programs in different places. Ten years ago, this was the game, and it's still a huge game in this state. I don't ever downplay that because I love it and it's a rivalry game. But but Utah has bigger fish to fry than the Cougs. And if they lose to BYU next Thursday night, but still win the South and beat Oregon, Washington, somebody to win the Pac-12 championship, it'll be a blip. It, w- it won't be a blip for BYU fans because they'll pound <laughs> their chest and say, we beat you. We beat the Pac-12 champions. We're here. So, but, but yeah, I, I don't know that it would be the most devastating loss, but it would certainly hurt until they went out and beat SC or beat Washington or somebody like that. Bill, let's finish with this uh, really quick. I was talking with Blaine Fowler the other day, and we were trying to remember a time 
or the last time Utah was picked to win the conference, any conference, outright in the preseason? Do you know that year? Because I feel like it's been a long time, right? I would have to go. That I haven't actually looked at. I want to say they were. I'd have to go back and look at 08. I know they were in 04. I mean, that, that, would, that was the team that Urban – remember, TCU I don't think was in the, the Mountain West yet. I think Correct. it was still Utah. And, and that was, you know, the end of the Croton era, so the Cougs were come, coming into the season down a bit. I think Utah, because they were consensus preseason 20, I want to say it might have been 04 okay. was the last time that they were like a unanimous – pick to win the conference champ i'd have to go back and look at 08 but tcu was probably in the mix and byu may have been in the mix that year too but i think 04 for sure they would have been because i'm trying to think of anybody else that would have been in the mountain west at the time maybe csu with sunny lubick but i'm I'm gonna guess it was probably 04 very good confirm it tweet it at me and then i'll respond and we'll blow it up again man (laughs) oh my gosh we'll blow it up again Take the matches away from him, would you, Jeremy? <laughs> Seriously. The Twitter arson. Take the matches away from him. I, I, I had a little fire going, and then Spencer came in with all of his BYU followers and threw a gigantic match on my very dry kindling yesterday. Pour the gasoline. We call him the, the gas man. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Bill, it's great to talk to you. We, uh, we really wanted to talk to you today because we think it's only fair that you have your say in this whole uh, debate of how you define competitive. So thanks for joining us. No, you're, you guys are welcome anytime, and uh, glad I could uh, have a little discussion. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys next Thursday down in Provo. You got it, man. Thanks, Bill.